if you have your Bibles with you this morning, you can open up to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. And this is a prophetic word, I believe, to Believer's Church. It says in chapter, uh, in, in, in chapter 3, verse 14, it says, So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. And I pray that He would unveil within you the unlimited riches of His glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to continue reading in just a moment, but I want you to know this right off the bat. We are standing here for a reason. During this season, as I stand amongst and above the Snake River Canyon, these are flood seasons in our region. This is the time when waters are being dispersed amongst the land to help irrigate and bring forth a beautiful life into this beautiful southern Idaho. And so when I read this portion, I want you to think and experience and take a look at God's beauty behind us, His unlimited riches, His glory and favor, and His supernatural strength, the divine might and His explosive power. When we move on to verse 17, it says, then by constantly using your faith. God is inquiring something of us. He is saying to you today, He wants you to use your faith. The life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place of His love will become the very source and root of your life. Verse 18 says this, then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. How deeply intimate measurement that transcends our understanding, this extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and to accomplish, to accomplish all of this. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we have to be able to minister the word of God, Father, that the words that are being spoken today will reach every corner of this earth. But God, we pray a supernatural prayer in this magic valley, Lord, that your might and your power will be displayed through strength and honor in Jesus' name. The title of today's message is Strength and Honor. I believe that God is repositioning us. He's reforming us. He is reigniting something within us because He has something to reveal through us. It's in His strength, in His honor, in His timing. This is a very unique time that we live in. And I have to say that I am so grateful with all of my heart. And I tell my children every day, God has created us for such a time as this. He truly is saving the best for last. Not that we're better than others, but that we have a divine appointment in the season in which we live. And this is a beautiful season in which we live that God has called us to be more than an overcomer. To seek exchange in fear so that we can exchange our fear and our weaknesses to bring forth His honor, that we can bring forth His glory, to give us a new perspective of strength and a position of honor. You know, where I stand today, I was talking to someone recently and he was explaining to me how years ago, pioneers used to come from the north side of this canyon wall and they would hike down with all of their loads of equipment and building supplies and their mules, their horses, whatever it might be in their families. And they would come down this high region and they would go down all the way to where the Snake River is, the Roaring Snake River. And they would actually cross it and come back up the other side. Now, just previously, you saw Pastor Clay, and he had a majestic waterfall in the background. Can I tell you something? Even in that moment, those pioneers, many times they pass that waterfall without even thinking twice. But you know what is so crazy? Is that God wants to change our perspective. Thank God this massive bridge was built because now we have gained an entirely new perspective where once the pioneers only saw things close and up, up, up close, now we can see things from a bird's eye perspective. This canyon is filled with life. It has thousands of waterfalls within just a few miles of this place. In fact, we have one just a couple of miles up the road called Shoshone Falls, and it literally is called the Niagara of the West. It's actually wider than Niagara Falls. 
We are so extremely blessed. And I believe that this is a season where God wants to give us a new perspective in life. Today is much different than it was yesterday. The call of God that he placed upon my life yesterday is not the same that he placed today. My question to you today is this, are you willing to allow your perspective to be changed by the glory of God to give him back the glory that he deserves? Now we cross that bridge hundreds of times every year. You know, many times I don't even think twice. Sometimes I take it for granted. But let me tell you something. The perspective that we see when I do look down off that bridge, it's amazing. It's beautiful and majestic. And I'll tell you what, I would have loved to have had that opportunity years ago to see things from that perspective instead of the way that they did today. I'm grateful for the pioneers, but I'm grateful for today and the, the day that which God has called us to live right now. I believe that God is repositioning us to see his strength in a whole new way. God says to everything that there is a season and oh, what a season it is that we are living in right now. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, the King James Version says this, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. It's a new season. God is doing new things and he's doing things in a new way. I want you to be encouraged, but I also want you to be challenged. If new things are not taking place in your life, I encourage you to dive deeper into the Word of God. He is explosive in His power, and He is desiring to reveal something brand new to you. To not live off of yesterday's manna, but to live off of the feast that He has prepared before you. God is doing new and amazing things, and He has decided that this is the best season for you to be in, which means that you have a call of God upon your life, and He desires to do something through you. Number one in just four points this morning is this. This is a season for mountain moving faith. Now, when I was listening to that scripture the other morning, when I got up, something exploded with my heart. And it was this. It was a question that I believe that God was asking me. And he said, Heather, are you that mountain? Now, many times when we use that verse and we think of that scripture, we're talking about speaking to the mount and mountain and telling it to be moved and to cast into the sea. But God said, Heather, are you that mountain? Are you what is in the way from me bringing forth my glory to this region? In other words, what he was saying is the ways of the past are old ways now. Are you willing to move into the future? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to morph into what I have called you to be? Are you willing to try something that no one else has ever tried? Are you willing to believe and to have the faith that truly does move mountains? But are you that mountain that needs to be moved? You know, I once heard someone say that they don't go to church because there's hypocrites there. Are you going to be that hypocrite that keeps someone else from coming into the house of God? Are you going to be the item that's standing in the way when God is saying, can you just move? Can you change? Can you adapt? Not to the ways of this world, but to the ways that he's calling us to. We are living in a revealing time where I believe God is wanting to speak to heart hearts and to do something new. Are you willing to reposition yourself with the strength of God to bring on a whole new anointing, to step out and to try something that you've never done before? You know, I've heard of some religions that say, all you have to do is go and serve your time for a few years and get that checklist mar list marked off of, your, off of your list. And then all of a sudden you're done. And God says he desires that you serve him yesterday, today, and forever. That you have the call of God upon your life forever. You never retire. I don't care what age you are. You have the will and the word of God. You have the answers that other people are seeking inside of you. What if you are the mountain that needs to be moved? What if you are the obstacle that God is speaking to? What if God is wanting to reposition you with a new anointing, a higher calling, a more revealing anointing, one that would bring him glory regardless of the circumstances, a gifting so fitting that only you could carry out the mission? And oh, what a vital mission that is, church. I believe that God is repositioning his children, those who have a close relationship with him. Now, I want to say that again. I believe that God is repositioning his children, those who have a close relationship with him. I believe it's those children who are chosen by God. I believe we're all chosen but God can't use everyone unless you're willing to be used. And he's not going to use you unless you're in his word. He's not going to use you unless you are filled with the word of God. When you are dancing in the spirit, when you are in your alone time are rejoicing to Jesus, 
I'll tell you what, just yesterday we had some crazy, awesome praise and worship just cranking in our home. And my oldest daughter said, Mama, wait till you hear this new song. It's just going to rip you apart and in a good way, of course. And it did. I was over in the corner of the house and she had a player and I was just bawling. Are you allowing God to move your heart and your spirit? Or have we grown calloused to the ways of this world? Have we grown so accustomed and so used to the way that religion has been in the past that we're not willing to change into what he has for us in the future? Because the future is different. Today is different than yesterday. This month is different than just a few months ago. And by golly, this year is a whole lot different than last year. Are you willing to be that mountain that will move and be the person that God has called you to be? In Jude one twenty, it says, But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith and pray in the power of the Spirit. I encourage you to build yourself up by praying in the Spirit of God. Number two, it says, We serve a revealing God. God is wanting to reveal the answers to a hurting world in you and through you. He, that's his desire. He desire to he desires to reveal his word in you and through you. Reveal is this when it's used as a verb, make previously unknown or secret information known to others. Do you know that God doesn't want to just reveal himself to you so that you can just keep that deep revelation within yourself? The true meaning of reveal is to reveal that masterpiece. It's to reveal that piece of wisdom to other people. It's to share the gospel with other people. And number two, revealing when it's used as an adjective is this, making interesting or significant information known, which to me says that we don't know it all. We don't know everything, but God does. Nothing takes him by surprise. This whole COVID-19, he's not surprised. He knows the answer. And in fact, I know, I, I not only believe, but I know that he has given, has already given the answer to so many doctors on how to overcome this disease. He's already revealed his purpose and his plan. The question is, are you going to allow that to be used upon your life? You know, I have a friend of ours uh, when Clay and I were engaged. Well, well, before we were engaged, we were in Bible college and we went to, to Bible college with so many wonderful people. And if by chance you're online watching this morning, we want to say good morning and, and welcome. We can't wait to host you when you come up to the Idaho area again. But we have a friend of ours who is a doctor now. And I believe that God in that moment of a crisis revealed to him how to take care of all of his patients. And he did. God revealed to him what to do. And he stood in faith and he carried out the mission. And in doing so, 97% of his patients are now well and they're alive. And that is a testimony only God's goodness. And that means that there's going to be seasons in your life when God reveals something to you and it goes against the grain of this world. You might get some persecution, not just might, he did. He had a lot of persecution, many news stations who came against him and opposed him. But God is faithful and he is good. And those who, lay, who are living now are rejoicing and their families are rejoicing because of that honor that he showed God through being obedient to his word when God revealed him with what to do. It says this, it says, don't, let me, let me say this. God is our refuge and strength. Paul, Psalms 46 verse one, an ever present help in times of trouble. God will be there. No matter how difficult it is, when God asks you to do something completely out of your comfort zone, God will be there. Things you never knew, God is going to give you the answers to. I believe he's going to give you the ideas. He's going to give you that heart and that passion and that mind of creativity. I pray over my kids and myself all the time that they have a creative mind because we serve a creative God. He's never stopped creating. He created the world and he's not done. The permission to chart the unknown. He's trusting you to hear from him, to bring forth the good news to his children in ways they've never heard before. God trusts you. God trusts you. God trusts you. Are you willing? And yet you're able. You are able. But are you willing to allow the trust in you to come alive and to trust in God like you never have before? Oh, it's a wild world we live in, but he is worth trusting. Don't be the mountain that gets in the way. Don't let your reputation, don't let your opinion, 
Don't let your pride or your fear, your doubt or unbelief get in the way. Are you that mountain that needs to be moved? For my thoughts in Isaiah 55 verse 8 is this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Why would we even try to trust in our own strength when we can trust in God? Number three, timing is everything. Like Mary, I want you to be that person who understands timing. In John 2, 11, it talks about a wedding. I'm gonna condense this a little bit for you. It's the wedding feast in the Galilean village of Cana, and Jesus' mother was there. With so many guests in attendance, they realized that they had ran out of wine. Mary says to Jesus, isn't there something that you can do about this? My dear one, he said, if I do this, it won't change anything for you. But, if, but it will change everything for me. For my hour for unveiling, my power has not yet come. You know, I've read that so many times and in different translations. And one translation says something on the line of, what does that have to do with me? And I'm thinking, man, if my child spoke to me like that, I would have something to say back, you know? But, you know, I'm not Mary and she responded much better than probably what I would have to the very son of God. But I also believe that there was a part of Mary that thought, you know, Jesus, I gave birth to you. I'm the one who was prophesied over. I was the one who the angel came and visited. Jesus, it is your time. Jesus, you are my son. You know, sometimes there's just a timing that mothers know and, and they have deep within their heart exactly when it's time to step out in faith. You know, the word of God says that Jesus experienced everything that we did, that he experienced both pain and grief. Could it have been that maybe in that brief moment he, he needed encouragement? And sometimes I think it's only a mom who can bring forth that type of encouragement that will allow their son to step into the future calling that God called him to do. And when I read last night, I was reading through the translation, Passion, um, the Passion Translation, and in the footnotes it said this, and it just, just went off in my heart, and I hope that it goes off in your heart too. And mamas, if I can speak to you right now, I hope that this would go off in your heart because you do know what's best for your children. And you do know the right timing that God has placed in your heart to see them to walk into the ministry that God has called them to. Even though it can be the most difficult years of their lives that lay ahead, God has trusted you with his timing. Can I share this with you this morning? In the Passion Translation it said, for Mary, it will change her very little. But for Jesus, this will be his first public miracle and will dramatically change his ministry from this moment on as the crowd see the power that he possesses. You know, something changes in your life when you are at one season a secret Christian, you pray in your closet, but boy, when that anointing comes and God says, I want you to become public, I want you to take a stand, I want you to reach out and not care what the world has to say, there's a whole new ball game that takes place with that. And it says, for that moment, on, as, as the crowds see the power that he possesses, Jesus knows his miracle ministry will come out of hiding by performing a miracle. Yet with Mary's encouragement, Jesus proceeds to do just that. Could it be that in that moment, Jesus needed encouragement? I believe that it was. I believe in that moment that that strength was exchanged a strength that only a mother could give a child. There is an anointing upon mamas today. It goes on to say, whatever Jesus tells you to do, make sure that you do it. The stone water pots nearby were filled. He told him to fill them up with water and you know the rest of the story. She said, he said to go out and fill it, your, pot, your uh, pitchers with water, bring it to the master's ceremony. They did and when, he, when they did, the master of the t ceremony stood up and said, you know, most people save, give the best wine at first and save the last uh, for not so good. But in this season, he said, you know what? You have saved the best wine for last. I believe again, that's another prophetic moment when God is saying this, he has chosen the best for last. Do you know that you are God's chosen, that you are the best for last? In this, these last days that we're living, it's by no accident that you're alive right now. I want to encourage you that this is your season. I want to encourage you that this is your timing. Jesus is saving the best wine for now. Be like Mary and understand that timing is everything. The last point that I have for you this morning is this, honor what God calls honorable. 
Most of us know the story of Rahab the harlot out of Joshua chapter 2. Like Rahab, that person who exchanges the fear of judgment for the fear of the Lord. There are many of us today that are afraid. We're afraid that if we step out and reveal ourselves, we start walking in the power. When we come out from being a closet Christian to a public Christian, we're afraid. You know, Rahab is a perfect example. She exchanged her fear of judgment for being a prostitute, for being a harlot, and she exchanged it for the fear of the Lord. Rahab made the exchange from the fear of judgment to the fear of the Lord, and by doing so, she brought salvation to her entire family. I want to say this to all of the fathers in the home. I know this is Mother's Day, but fathers, I want to speak to you. God has called you to be the gatekeeper in your home. He has called you to be a leader. And God has placed a beautiful and special and a very honorable strength inside of you to draw your family out of a judgmental environment and into the holiness of God. I believe that God desires for us to fear him in a godly way that says, I don't care about the opinions of this world. I no longer care about the way that I've lived or even led in the past. God has called me to be the leader of my home. And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's the decision that Rahab made. Rahab made the exchange from the fear of judgment to the fear of the Lord, and by doing so, brought salvation to her and to her legacy leaving behind her. Do you know that Rahab was in the very lineage of, of Jesus Christ? God can take what the enemy went for evil, and he can turn it for good. He did it for Rahab and thousands of others, and he can do it for you too. By faith, Rahab hid, hid the spies. By faith, Rahab attached the scarlet thread. By faith, Rahab was changed from a harlot to a righteous woman. Be that person who stands from what is right for what is right and be filled with strength and honor. I hope this message encouraged you today. As we close out, remember the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. He is the bridge to eternity from death into life. And by the way, if you guessed on how many petals were in this flower today, if your guess was close to 508, you have a gift card heading your way. Be blessed and happy Mother's Day. Before we close out our service today, I want to give you an opportunity, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to do that today. Hey, would you pray with me? The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe in your heart and say with your mouth, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. With your heart you believe, and with your mouth you're communicating and saying that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So come on, join with me, and mean this with your heart, and let's pray. Say, Father, I come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of doing my life on my own. Forgive me, Lord, of the ways that I live without you. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and I welcome you into my life. Come be my Lord. Come save me from my sins. Come save me, and I welcome you to my life. From this day forward, I'm going to serve you. I believe that you died on the cross, that you were placed in the grave, and on the third day you rose, Easter morning, to prove that you are the Son of the living God. So I thank you. I receive you. I welcome you into my life, and I ask you to lead me. I ask you to guide me. I ask you to walk me, Lord, through this life. Help me to live for you. Show me and reveal to me my talents and my giftings. Lord, help me to make a difference through my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer this morning, that you made the most important decision of your life, if you would connect with us, we'd love to follow up with you by sending you a book called The Ten Steps to Christ to help you in your next steps with Jesus. So if you would, email the church at office at believerschurchidaho.com if you're in our area so we can send you that book and that resource. We would love to bless you and see you moving in a relationship with Jesus. Also, I want to encourage you with three things. Get planted in a Bible-believing church so that you're encouraging your walk with Jesus to get around other people that are encouraging your faith. Number two, read the scriptures and get in the word. You can download a Bible app. Those are available as apps on your, on your iPhone. 
an Android. We'd love for you to read the word. And then lastly, I wanna encourage you, spend some time in prayer and just speak and talk with the Lord. I'm telling you, your life will be totally transformed if you'll submerse and immerse yourself in a relationship with Jesus. You made the best decision ever. Hey, we're gonna transition and honor God in our giving. As you guys are preparing to do that, you guys know the four different ways that you can give. You can use our Church Center app and give safely and securely there by downloading that app and then connecting to our church through that app. Secondly, you can also give online at believerschurchidaho.com. Click on our giving link and you can give safely and securely there. Thirdly, you can also text to give by texting the number 84321 and then enter an amount, send it, and then you'll receive a prompt of how to connect and give online through texting. And then lastly, you can also give by correspondence by mailing it to the church at Believer's Church, 100 East Avenue D, Jerome, Idaho, 83338. Thank you so much for your generous giving and thanks for being a part of the service today. We hope that you were completely blessed by the service and we can't wait to see you next week. Until then, God bless you and we'll see you then.